Utter History Untold. There's some gameplay footage for us to look at. A very sneak peek look here. You can see some pre-alpha footage of this brand new turn-based 4X strategy game from Oxide, a development studio founded with the key developers from Civilization V. That's right, everybody. This is a brand new turn-based historical strategy game from Oxide Games published by Microsoft. And as you can see on screen, the developers sat down briefly and she had some more information about Arta History Untold today. So in this video, we're going to go through not just this beautiful trailer that you're watching in the background, but more importantly, some new information revealed, as well as these screenshots. I've got a few extra ones of those to show you. And crucially, what the developers said briefly today in this interview uh, as part of Microsoft's sort of ongoing Summer Games Fest announcement event, which is basically wrapping up at this point with the Steam Next Fest Festival. We'll also take a closer look at quite a few of these screenshots to try and eke some detail out of those as well. Thank you very much for joining me today as we discover what we know about Ara History Untold. My name is Jumbo Pixel. If you'd like more of this content, do join us. And without any further ado, Let's begin. First and foremost, this is the footage that we've seen. This is the footage from the very start of the video. It's very sparse. We have about 20 seconds worth, but there's a lot of detail to unpack. Detail is actually probably the operative word here because take a look at the detail of these cities, of everything that's developing, shaping, and changing on the map. You get not only a feel of civilization, but as you can see, when we compare it to Civ VI, there's also a, a slightly different feeling to this game. And as you'll see from the screenshots that I'm about to throw up on screen, I think we have a mixture of sort of Civilization V and almost actually down into the granular detail of perhaps something like City Skylines. You'll note also that there are civilians walking around on the map, just like how humankind models little uh, civilians and horses and little animals on the map. This game takes that absolutely to the next level. And from what we can tell by their website and from the detail that the developers have talked about and released, it won't just be sort of a cosmetic feature. It's not that these little people are put on simply as animated details, but rather they shape part of a living world. And that was one of the key things that the developers talked about in their interview today, actually, about how this game will play in practice, their design vision, if you will. So I think we should start with that and then move through into the known details like civilizations or units that could be in the game, how its errors or acts may be structured, and of course, how we can get our grubby little hands on it. The four key taglines for Art of History Untold, the four sort of messages that they're trying to convey and tell. Firstly, explore a living world. Secondly, rule your way. Thirdly, build your nation. And finally, prove your worth. You'll notice there's a lot of emphasis on you here. And when you sit down and listen to the developers, they convey that message further. In their interview today, they said that the game is less about optimization. In my take, it was sort of less about that min-maxing and more about impacting your agency and your expression. And if you think about the name of the game, Ara History Untold, it sort of also conveys that message. This is a game based on history, but potentially about a version of history that is untold. Eagle-eyed viewers may have already picked up on a few details that might not perfectly align with history. I also want to highlight this screenshot because I think this is our best shot of the world as a zoomed out perspective, right? There are loads of screenshots of zooming in on the living world, of the little people, of the citizens, the jungles and the deserts. Here we see what the map looks like at a wider perspective. And I think this is potentially where we see more of that civilization-like, humankind-like elements to building a map rather than looking at individual cities and stories within them. You'll notice different regions, not necessarily hexes, but more fluid, more natural looking. You'll also see armies and cities on this map. You can see one from uh, uh, Africa, Zulu, potentially here is under siege, but you can also see different territories, the Nile, the Black Forest, ocean territories, land and cities. This is our best look at the map, and it's actually the only look. When you bounce back to civilization, you can see it's a very different feel. Whether we're looking at the zoomed in view of Ara History Untold or the zoomed out map view that we've been given, none of them quite fit this civilization design. And that's, of course, not necessarily a bad thing. More on the living world, though, and what they actually said in the interview, they said that they wanted to create a world that was authentic, that provided cool choices, 
and a world where you could see your citizens reflecting those choices. And I think that we get a feel of that not only in the little pre-alpha footage that they showed us, but also when we look back at some of those more zoomed in screenshots of what Ara History Untold looks like. I'll continue throwing these screenshots up as we move through the video. In fact, let me throw another one up now so that we can actually have some context. Here we can see one of the cities. I pointed this one out in my previous video. You can see a couple of wonders in here, three of them in fact, maybe even more, it's hard to tell. But you can also see that city design is different. Districts, roads, buildings, all of these things that make a city. And the way that the developers were talking about building a living world and having our choices of agency and expression reflected in it, I think highlights potentially how our decisions in Ara History Untold will have more of an impact. In Civilization VI, we have our one tile city and potentially some districts built around it, and that's kind of it. Really, we're zoomed out at a, at a more strategic view of the world. It seems that Art of History Untold will allow us to really delve into the detail. Perhaps you set a policy where your city goes green and that's reflected entirely across the map. I'm not sure, that's speculation, but it does bleed into their explore a living world and rule your way. And when you zoom in on this kind of detail, you get a feeling for more. You get a feeling for defensive buildings, military buildings. Uh, wonders here again, but also citizens. Look at them all going about living their lives. Hopefully there'll be a way for us as rulers to set overarching themes like policy direction, and that will change the way that these cities are shaped. Moreover, the developers uh, highlighted two more points in their interview today. Uh, the first one was that they wanted to bring a quote, alternative earth to life. And I think that's reflected in the screenshots and the mantra as well. Of course, it's an alternative earth. There's a Colosseum and the Pyramid of Giza and Himeji Castle in one place. Uh, history games have always allowed us to do this. They've always allowed us to tell a version of history that isn't quite like it was told in the books. And anybody who's played a civilization or humankind campaign will already know that. But I think that Ara History Untold takes it a step further. They go on to say that it's about remixing, reimagining, and rewriting history. So here, it feels as though we're being presented with more of an open canvas, a blank canvas, if you will. It's built still on history, clearly. We have historical wonders, historical civilizations, more on those in a minute. Also, it reflects history and society. Here you can see much more of a modern built-up city. I can see what I suspect are public transport hubs in sort of the, the middle left-hand side of the screen, those domes. In the middle, we can see communications towers. We can see ongoing construction with a crane working on some, some buildings in the middle of the city. You can see citizens gathering in a park down the bottom right. And of course, natural features, landscape, ocean, etc. Lots of information and lots of moving parts in these cities that I suspect we'll get to mess with and play around with at a much more granular detail than we've seen in previous uh, Forex and historical strategy games. So in terms of the detail, what do we know? And I'm going to throw up a few more uh, things on screen, including those design mantras that I was talking about earlier. In fact, let's start with one of those right now and then move through into the detail. So firstly, we know, as I mentioned at the start of the video, that this game is being developed by some of the lead developers from Civilization V and I believe XCOM as well. Uh, Oxide were founded nine years ago in one man's basement and now they're bringing us history untold. I think we're in fairly good hands, at least as far as we know. And from the comments section on my last video, a lot of you seem to think the same. Next, in terms of actual in-game detail, well, we know it's about more of a story of our own agency, as I mentioned earlier, building our nation, proving our worth, etc, etc. And of course, it's about that version of history untold. And in the footage that I'm going to replay to you shortly, in about 30 seconds, so brace yourself, and I'd encourage you to get ready and look for detail, you can see that history untold element. I have seen a few things that are unlikely to align perfectly with history, in terms of where they're placed on the timeline, and also just how developed they are. A couple of other things that you noticed as well uh, include drones in times where perhaps they shouldn't be and airships as well in perhaps where they shouldn't be. When I say shouldn't of course I'm referring to the historical context rather than what this game will allow us to do. Now in terms of the actual granular detail and here's that footage now around what we can play, how we can play, we know a few things. We know already that uh, a few civilizations have been confirmed. For starters, Egypt, Greece, and the US. 
We also know from looking at these screenshots and perhaps eking a little bit more detail out of them that we're likely to see some kind of either South African or perhaps Zulu nation in the game. We may also see a Germany. I've noticed a German coat of arms in a couple of the screenshots and you may have as well. Lastly, we know that from looking down the bottom right of some of the screenshots, the timing, the errors, seem to be a little bit different from what we're used to. They're described in three different ways. Acts, eras, and then finally given their historical context, perhaps atomic or antiquities, depending on the time period. The interesting point to note is the acts. It refers to act one. The errors we're used to from something like humankind and, of course, civilization to a lesser extent. And ages, likewise, we're used to from games like humankind and civilization. The introduction of the word act, act one, implies that there could potentially be some kind of story, some ending point where it moves on or transitions quickly through into something else. That is me grasping at straws a little bit, but you can see it down the bottom there. Act one, era, the antiquities, turn 47 and the year 1742 BCE. Now, in some of the screenshots, the years and the turns and the eras don't quite align. In a future one, you'll notice it's the atomic era, it's turn one. This could very much be because it's an early build, a technical build, and they're just playing around to try and get screenshots, right? The detail may not be ironed out there. So it's important to note that we might not want to read into that too far, other than it does appear as though the timings, the eras, or the turns will be structured in a slightly different way than what we're used to. Finally, in the context of actually how the game will play, I think we're seeing both granular and bold gameplay. Granular in the detail, down into the cities, citizens' individual lives, but then bold because the game is marketed as not just a strategy, but a historical grand strategy game, with no preset paths to victory, quote, leading to endless possibilities. Your choices will define the world you create, your experience and your legacy, end quote. They go on to say that there'll be both familiar and innovative gameplay mechanics, and I think we see that again in that sense of scale. Here we delve back in, there's that German coat of arms I was talking about earlier, possibly delving back into the city, to the individual lives of people, construction, transport, policy, etc. But then at that wider level, this is a grand strategy game. A grand strategy game implies lots of moving potentially complex systems. Systems of arts and culture, of research, which we've seen up the top right with technologies in the screenshots, but also diplomacy and economy and trade. Those are really big parts of grand strategy games, particularly ones that are based on history. We need only to look at paradox with games like Hearts of Iron 4 to see how logistics and trade, econ economics and policy really matter to a grand strategy environment. And so in order for Art of History Untold to actually be a grand strategy game, as well as have this granular level of detail, it needs to represent sort of an almost city skylines like level of detail in cities, but then maintain the grand strategy structure. If they can pull it off, I'm very excited to see it. Speaking of, when will we see it? Well, if you go onto their website, you can see the sign up for the Insider program, which crashed because of all of the info and all of the uh, intense passion of people trying to sign up to it the other day. It's live again now. When you sign up to it, you'll get an email, and the email will tell you that there will be a pre-alpha early build for us to play, quote, later this summer. I'm assuming that's your Northern Hemisphere summer, which you're probably in the middle of right now, considering how miserable it is outside for me, which means that we could be seeing a build of this very soon. So I would encourage you to go and sign up for that Insider program. In terms of its actual wider release date, we know that it's being published by Xbox, available through Game Pass, which is brilliant. And it seems that it will release around early 2023. We know that all of the games that Microsoft were talking about will be releasing within the next 12 months. So we at least have that sort of final cap to work towards. But looking at their promotional material, it looks like we could be seeing it potentially earlier in 2023. Thank you very much for watching.